Folks, we have the concierge of small business loans on the show today, Bo Eckstein, and he's going to talk about an important press release that came out on August 1st, where President Biden is encouraging folks to become entrepreneurs and leverage small business loans. I hope I haven't overstated that, Bo, but you have the August 1st press release. What is in it? What is so important? Why do we need to pay attention? Well, basically, the SBA's goal is to empower entrepreneurs and small business owners with the, uh, the resources needed to start, grow, and recover from disasters. So some of the new guideline changes, which we briefly talked about on other episodes, um, they, the small balance SBA loans went from three hundred and fifty dollars to 500000 There's big, big influence from the SBA to help um, the smaller type of businesses, the startups. Uh, they're putting a big... Uh, push in women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses. So it, it's a great time. And the the smaller loans go through a system. We, there's a credit scoring system called the SBSS, and that's a small business credit scoring system. So so basically, you, you pretty much need a 160. And that's like almost like a FICO score. It takes into account your personal credit, any business, um, what you're buying. Is it a franchise? And that's a scoring system. So it's actually a pretty streamlined process for these small balance loans. They go, they go through pretty quick. I work with one bank right now and they're extremely efficient. And so we had one, one client that had some, some um, past lates that on their credit. And one of the banks said, no, we're not going to do this. And it wasn't even the, the borrower's fault. It was, you know, somebody stole his identity. And so uh, the SBSS score takes into account all of that and actually they approved the credit portion of it so far. So it's very encouraging when it got, when they got canned by another bank. So right. the bottom line is banks still overlay. What, what I mean by that is they still have their own guidelines, but yeah. what I do specific to this is find the right fit. That's really what I do. I find the right fit based on the deal. So if there's like uh, there's no collateral on the deal, some banks won't do deals without commercial real estate involved. And other mm -hmm. banks love business acquisition. We call it airball when there's no collateral. We call it airball. So, so depending on that is how we structure it. But it's very encouraging with the new guidelines uh, and, and the new press release that are coming out. Most of the new updates to the procedures of the SOP, which is basically the underwriting guidelines, um, all took effect August 1st. So you know, I think the so, uh, so let me yeah. let me ask you some quick questions. Obviously, you're the concierge small business loans. I have, I'll just say it, no experience there. But what it sounds like they've done to me, done is they've increased the loan limit from three hundred to five hundred, which makes more folks eligible for this streamlined process. And then in the residential mortgage world, right? If you go through FHA, they have this system that basically says approve eligible or not. It sounds like that's what the SBA has. So. As long as you have or working with somebody like the concierge of small business loans, you, in this case, know how to put the, the I don't know, application together for the best chance of success. That's what I think I hear you saying in all of this. Yeah. I mean, it's really to get things done. Sometimes you have to be re really resourceful. I'll give you an example. I had a, a client come to me last year and they had, but they've worked with the same commercial mortgage broker for years. And this guy's. This guy's got a $60 million net worth. Oh, wow. Anyways, I ended up getting him a term sheet for this SBA 504 deal. So it was about a $14 million deal. He ended up deciding to go bridge and now he's done with the project and now he's looking to refinance and he's kicking himself for not going with the SBA, SBA 504. Well, he came back to me and the other broker because he has allegiance to her because he's been working with her 15 years, which I understand. But she, she went out and shot the deal to 80 banks, 80 banks. And she did it the, like the total wrong way, meaning on an SBA 504 deal, you need to have the SBA approval before you take it to the banks. If it's a kind of an interesting deal, and this is a very unique deal. So she did it the wrong way. I had three banks in mind. And basically, we, I'm going to end up getting it done this time because I'm navigating it the right way because every bank has different appetites, even DSCR lenders on, you know, real yeah. estate banks for commercial real estate, they all have different caveats. And that's the, that's the value that a broker brings in or, uh, you know, to facilitate these deals. If you go to your local bank, they're going to, they're going to give you Hit whatever miss. they could do. You don't know. Yeah. So yeah, you, you don't know. 
and appetites change. And that, you know, again, one, I have, I have a DSCR, I have velocity mortgage on every Thursday convoy, Matt, the mortgage guy, this is where I'm comfortable, but it is really amazing to me how similar your SBA world is with my experience in the, in the borrowing, right? I'm a borrower in these cases. And it is, it's always the broker that makes the deal. And the beauty of what I've tried to do at one rental at a time is I bring up brokers that cover different areas. Um, you know, Velocity does a 90% CLTV, right? You want to go buy an apartment building with 10% down? Great. I got you, right? You need some seller financing and yada, yada, yada. You want some traditional FHA, VA? Great. Got you, right? So um, this is why you have to work with a broker who is the concierge because you have these relationships. You're not going to shop a deal. Dude, Bo, you would never shop a deal at 80 banks. That's That's lazy and inefficient. You would go, hey, I'm going to look at my Rolodex. This deal means maybe five of them, but I'm going to pick three that have the best chance of success. You're not about wasting your time, the bank's time, or your borrower's time. I, I have a friend who owns, uh, he owns a, uh, he does DSCR loans and hard money loans. He's based in Florida. And, he, and last year he bought an office condo to move his office into. And he paid cash. He does very well, so he can pay cash. And he's and he, then he uh, reached out to me because I'm in a mastermind with him. And he's like, hey, I've been working with this bank for five months to refinance my condo mm -hmm. here. And I'm like, all right, let, let me set, send me the file. You know, he knew what to do. Right. And he sent me he sent me a Google Drive with all his documents in there. And that's what we do. We identify banks. We use technology, too. So, you know, with AI and all this changing, if you're a, if you're facing debt, you need to use technology now. And so that's what we do, too. A lot of times we have platforms and we, we have. We have search tools in these platforms to identify the right lenders. So that's how I'm able to find community banks and regional banks that will do deals that, because there's thousands and thousands of them. Yeah. So really it's, it is a little bit of a, a process to do, but that's what we do well. Like a good broker, they're going to know how to facilitate. It's also important too, because we're talking on this, on this channel, on my segment at least, we're talking about business loans. So you got to know as a, as a borrower, you know, how to put projections together. And I also wanted to bring this up. I thought this is important. A lot of people that are coming uh, through all different sources, whether it's some people on your channel, they're coming, they're like, hey, I want to buy a business. I don't know what yet, right? And I, and I say, hey, listen, you know, I have a franchise broker team. They'll, they'll go through the process with you. Look at franchises, look at existing businesses, start understanding what these businesses do. What is the day in the life of these businesses? So I think that's very useful for people to do. Because a lot of people are set on like, I want to buy an existing business because it's going to cash flow from day one. But uh, what I'm telling them is look at everything. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, over time, you're going to really define your buy box because people come, people just all of a sudden have this, you know, buy box of everything and they just don't know. I no. think you got to really kind of narrow in and understand what these sectors do. A business is not real estate. It's moving parts, a lot more moving parts. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I, I do think the concept of a buy box plays with small businesses, but you're so right. Cody Sanchez gets you excited. Bo gets you excited. Go spend a little bit early time, figure out what makes you feel good, what feels, what's a compliment to who you are already. And then have a buy box for that and go look for that and reach out to Bo and, and see what kind of financing. Uh, any closing thoughts on this? And how can somebody get 15 minutes of your time to talk SBA with the concierge of small business loans. Yeah, um, boexteen.biz. That's boexteen.biz. Go to one rent all the time. Click on it. Takes you to the calendar. We meet over Zoom. Happy to, even if you're just getting started, there's so many people that are like, all right, I, I need to get started. I think I can give you a conversation which will push you in the right direction because I want you to learn right now. I want you to learn and figure out what's available and then make an educated decision. Don't rush into something. The other thing I'd like to say is that what I'm seeing on, in my world right now is I deal with both real estate investors and business owners and, and entrepreneurs is uh, there's a, a huge, huge push for a lot of people right now that want to start their own business. Mm -hmm. Something like two out of five, I was reading an article, two out of five Americans plan on starting a business this year. So there's oh, wow. huge opportunities. So put that in conjunction with SBA financing or seller financing, always go seller financing first, SBA second or you know uh rob's rollover which is if you have a old 401k it was a good tool but those that's the way to do it and it is achievable it is achievable even if you have thirty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars to your name 
you can go out and strategically start a business, leverage SBA financing, and yes, you can get into a business. Even if you have $30,000, uh, we have one gentleman that's working on buying a, an HVAC company, a startup franchise model. Total project costs are $150,000. So that's just $15,000 if you get an SBA loan uh, nice. and you qualify, obviously, for all that, right? So it's really not that hard, but also just think about your reserves. Think about your skill sets. Think about that this is a business and you're signing a loan. Yeah, this is, you know, you're guaranteeing a loan. And uh, I just saw somebody's pod uh, episode and this guy was getting business credit and he, and he's like, ah, I just default if I want. And he was showing a watch. Oh, I saw that on your Instagram. He's in a pool with a fancy watch with diamonds. I'm like, what a, Never mind. I won't. Use yeah, that was on watch. David Green's Instagram. David. Oh, that was David Green's. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know, these young kids you coming doing? up, they got to understand that. Put it this way. Those business, those business uh, credit, they all, they all, you all sign a personal guarantee like 99% of the time, unless you have mm -hmm. really established business credit. So this kid doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's preaching to the world, wrong information. And he just looks like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, again, uh, boexting.biz. It's a website, not an email, boexting.biz. Go get your 15 minutes. Bo, thank you for being here every week. All right, thanks so much. Mm-hmm.